It's Wednesday the uh, 20th of September and I've woken up feeling a little bit fuzzy headed this morning. <laughs> I had a really good night's sleep so uh, nothing to complain about there. Uh, I've come out to the greenhouse and unfortunately there are some early signs of blight uh, in tomatoes along this front row. Uh, so I've been, I've been taking them out, cutting them back, saving the tomatoes and doing the very best I can to save the rest of the crop which as you can see is looking pretty good uh, and it would be really nice if they could if they could ripen on the vine rather than me having to take them in uh, before they get blighted. So as always uh, if you've got blight you need to uh, either burn or completely separately dispose of all the all the material that's there so I'm literally just putting it all in this bag which will get tied up and uh, taken off to the municipal recycling centre. The other thing that I've just noticed is that these poor old vines have got so heavy with the fruit that they've they've bent over and they're oh bless them they're almost snapping across the <laughs> across the uh, string there that I've put up to support them but they're just hanging down with the the weight of the fruit so I think Today I'm also going to take the fruit off these branches that are bent over and, and cut them back and remove more of these leaves because I really should have taken some more of these leaves off to uh, let the air circulate better. So I'm going to crack on with that. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the plants have got some very early signs of blight. So my plan is to take uh, all the tomatoes I've picked today in and uh, and actually uh, freeze them and uh, and cook them and and get them stored away. And then I will keep a very close eye on these. I'm going to come in uh, twice a day and check to uh, to see what's happening with these plants and as soon as I'm sure they've got blight I'll take the tomatoes off them and dispose of the plants uh, because I really don't want uh, blight spores in the greenhouse uh, if I can help it. So these are the tomatoes I've brought in uh, the various stages of ripeness but before I cook those and freeze them I'm going to go and have a quick shower wash all the blight spores off me and change my clothes because the one thing that I really don't want to do uh, it spread blight all around the garden. My plans for today had absolutely nothing to do with uh, taking down tomato plants and dealing with <laughs> great big bowls of tomatoes. Uh, but that's the way it goes with homesteading. Uh, you think you're going to be doing one thing and you're presented with something else. So uh, I'm now going to get all the, all the ripe tomatoes. Uh, I'm going to cut into quarters uh, onto a baking sheet and into the freezer to freeze individually uh, and then they go into bags after that. And last year I did this and uh, in, in March and April when it was thoroughly miserable outside to have homegrown tomatoes with my breakfast was just a, just a delight. So uh, very keen to be doing that again this year. I've already got a few bags of tomatoes uh, in the freezer to be able to do just that. Uh, but I shall carry on. And then the green tomatoes, well, I'm going to spend a bit of time online and look for um, something that can do with green tomatoes that isn't uh, just green tomato chutney or uh, green tomato passata because I'm sure there must be something better I can do with them. Maybe I can curry them or uh, I'll have a look <laughs> and see if I can find something uh, a bit more imaginative than, uh, than what I've been doing. Uh, but failing that, they will also get quartered and frozen uh, to use later on.
So I've put one lot in to freeze and then these tomatoes, um, which are a combination of not quite ripe and green tomatoes. I have, uh, I didn't look online. I came up with the idea that I was going to, uh, I'm going to slow roast them and um, I'm going to, well, I'm going to slow casserole them and reduce them right down and then they will be hopefully a really lovely rich tomato -y sauce uh, to add to uh, other dishes at a later date. So uh, I've got the tomatoes. I'm going to add a fairly generous glug of uh, extra virgin olive oil. Actually, I want that for the taste as well as uh, for its cooking properties. Um, I'm going to add uh, some balsamic vinegar. I'm not adding much of that because I'm going to pop in some homemade elderberry wine. Mr J and I have been doing our calculations on <laughs> how much it costs to make a bottle of homemade wine when the berries uh, or the fruit from it is foraged or homegrown uh, on a plant that we haven't had to pay out for that year. So, you know, if it's something that's a perennial plant. Uh, and we worked it out as about somewhere between 22 pence and 30 pence per bottle. So uh, I've just put in there about oh, about 17 pence <laughs> worth of wine. Um, and so as you can see, that's quite a lot of wine. Uh, it was a good half a bottle, if not two thirds. Uh, so I'm going to pop a bit of salt and pepper in this. Um, and then I'm going to get it into the oven. Right, I'm just the reason I'm pausing is I'm thinking, do I want to pop any herbs in it? I might put some Italian mixed herbs in as well. Mm -hmm. 